another VS Code extensions listicle? Well, yeah, but this one is actually focused on security extensions. We're diving into the top five Visual Studio Code extensions that are must haves for your security toolkit. First up, we have 1Password. Yes, I'm talking about 1Password, that password manager. Not only does it help in managing your account passwords, it can help with app passwords like API keys and secrets. With the 1Password extension for VS Code, you can easily manage and access your secrets from VS Code, eliminating the need to compromise security for convenience when you're building your apps. Let's take a look at how it works really quick. All right, first up, you'll go up to the extensions view in Visual Studio Code and search for 1Password. And you'll find this one here and you click on that and you're good to start going. Now, there's some caveats here. First, you need to get the CLI installed with them and they want version 2.4 or greater. Then you also need to be able to have a system that has biometric unlock. However, if you don't, it's okay because you can use your device password to do that type of thing. Then you have the extension and then you'll follow prompts to step through to set up your account. So it's a little bit of a heavy load up front to get set up, but once you're set up and running, you'll be good to go. So to get the CLI set up on your machine, you're going to head on over to their documentation at developer.onepassword.com. It'll again, recite the requirements you need for your different operating systems that you're running on. And then you install based on your operating system. So if you're on Mac, you could use homebrew windows. You can use PowerShell with scoop and Linux. There's some other ways, depending on your flavor of Linux, you might be using how you can get set up there. Then you need to turn on the one password desktop app integration from your one password application. And then you can start testing out the CLI tool itself. Once you have the CLI working, that's when you can head on over to the VS code extension to start taking advantage of that. The nice thing about that is you can store that sensitive data within your one password account and then load it up at runtime when your application needs it. The next extension I have for you is probably one you've heard of before. If you're a JavaScript developer, and that is ESLint. Now I know you're thinking, Brian, that's not what ESLint is used for. And in a sense, you are correct. Yes. ESLint is known for enforcing code standards, but as much as you may not want to recognize it, security is a part of those standards. So with the ESLint extension, it has a security plugin that you can catch common code mistakes and enforce security best practices, ensuring your code is both clean and secure. I'll show you how that works now. All right, just like before, you go to the extensions view, you're gonna search for ESLint. You likely already have this set up on your VS Code instance, but just in case you don't, then once that's set up, you can configure it globally, or you can go into your local project file and make sure you have the configuration. You can initialize your ESLint configuration through the project. And then you wanna also make sure you install the ESLint security plugin. Where do you get that? I'll show you. First of all, ESLint itself, you can learn more about it at eslint.org. To get the ESLint plugin for security, you're gonna to go to this GitHub repository from the ESLint community. And in order to get this set up, you install it as a dev dependency, save dev or hyphen D, capital D. And then once that's set up, you go to your ESLint configuration and you could say you can extend it in this manner if you like. Once that's set up, I'm going to show you how it works. So I open up my server.js file and now I'm getting all these squigglies, which is fun to see, but they're problems that is going to help me catch things before they bite me when I'm running my application and having to go through a longer cycle to figure out the problems that I have. So in here, if I hover over eval, we could see that the security plugin is saying, hey, you're using eval with an argument of type call expression, meaning I'm passing in something, some JavaScript code to eval. This is generally unsafe thing to do. Uh, maybe you're using regular expressions, like you want to validate an email format. Well, what if your regular expression is a little more uh, challenging in that it can lead to what's called a regular expression denial of service attack against your application? Well, the plugin helps detect that for you. It's an unsafe regular expression that can lock up your application on you. And so you might need to find a better regular expression for the purposes that you're looking for. And that's just a quick sampling of the ESLint extension and its plugin, how they can both save you from a security perspective in your applications. Now, moving on to the next extension. Speaking of best practices for security, you'll wanna make sure whenever you're actively using sensitive data like API keys or database connection strings, you don't accidentally reveal them to any onlooker. So, Maybe you're working in a public area, like at a local coffee shop, and maybe you're doing a live presentation, for instance, in front of an audience of people on the internet. Ooh, goody. Well, you don't, you want to make sure that when you accidentally maybe open up your ENV file that has that sensitive data within it, you're not revealing that to those onlookers, right? 
Well, there's an extension, Cloak. It has you covered. This extension hides important values in your environment configuration files, ensuring prying eyes can't see your secrets, even if they glance at your screen. Let's see this in action really quick. So heading back over to my screen, if you want to find the right extension to install, you go to the extensions view, search for Cloak, C-L-O-A-K, the one by John Papa here. And here's the details on it that you can see on the right-hand side. Once you have it installed, it's very simple and easy to get started with it. Anytime you open up an ENV file, in this case, I don't have anything all that sensitive in it, but you might find that uh, maybe your host is sensitive or uh, API key equals da -da 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 -da, right? And you save that. And I don't want to reveal that by accident. Well, I can tell Cloak extension to hide that for me. So if I bring up the command palette, control shift P or command shift P on Mac OS and Linux, or just Mac OS rather, sorry. I can say cloak toggle secrets or hide secrets. In this case, I'll do toggle and you can see they're no longer visible now. Now the key with that is make sure that they're within strings. If you have a secret and it equals just like this, cloak will not be able to detect that. So it has to be within the string characters, the double quotes or single quotes when setting those up for anything that you want to conceal in that manner. And that is the cloak extension to hide sensitive data in your configuration files like env files the next extension is for those security experts who often need to reverse engineer an application that is suspected of malicious behavior in order to do that depending on the type of application it might require several various tools to decompile the executable or binary into a more readable format for further analysis so imagine you can consolidate those tools into one decompiler for vs code makes it possible right from your editor supporting a variety of file formats like Java jar files, Windows executables, and more. Let's take a look at it now. All right, picking up where we left off before, if we go to the extensions view and we search for decompiler, we want the one by Tintin Web here, which I already have open on the right-hand side. You install it the way you would want. You click on the install button. You can see I already have these installed. And then you can start decompiling things. Now, I don't have any examples to go through with this personally right now to demonstrate for you. But the idea is you can just right click on the file. If you have it within the context of the current folder, you have open in Visual Studio Code, you can right click on that file and then decompile it. So long as it's one that's supported by this extension. And from there, you can see it in action here, right? Where it's decompiling a jar file. There's the decompile option. It takes a little bit of time. And then you could see the output results in that workspace within Visual Studio Code. And it's the raw source code for you to analyze further. And that is the decompiler extension in Visual Studio Code. All right, we're down to the fifth one. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Sneak VS Code extension. Could you have guessed that that would be one on this list? The Sneak extension scans your code and dependencies for vulnerabilities, offering fixes directly within your editor, in this case, VS Code. It's your all-in-one tool for maintaining high quality code and security standards. And we can check it out with a free account. Don't forget that. Let's check it out in action. All right, to get started with Sneak, you can go ahead and install the extension right away if you'd like. Uh, so you go to the extension view again, search for Sneak, make sure to install this one and not the preview one. You'll see it here. And once you have it installed, you're not gonna be able to use it quite yet because you need to link your Sneak account to it. So if you don't have a Sneak account already, head on over to your browser and go to sneak.io and you can choose to sign up right here. Now I'm already signed in, but if you wanted to sign up, you can sign up with a GitHub account, a, a bunch of other options that are available to you. But once I click on that, because I'm already logged in with my GitHub account, pick that up and sign me into my Sneak dashboard. From there, you need to tell Sneak what projects you want to use. And you can link to your source control management system like GitHub or GitLab and various other systems. Or you can use the Sneak CLI to manually add those to the Sneak dashboard here. But let's get back on over to the VS Code extension. Once you have the VS Code extension for Sneak installed, you'll notice a little dog icon here. That's Patch, our mascot. And you'll have an option here. If you haven't already signed into your account, you'll click the sign in button, which will then open up your browser to your signed in account on Sneak. You say that you want to authenticate there and everything's good to go. And then you can come back into the VS Code extension. Once that's available, you can click in here. It's probably going to prompt you to trust the current folder that you're working within first. And then you're fully ready to go. Okay, and you'll see similar results to what I'm seeing likely here where I have my open source security sash open or collapsible section open here. And there's code security. 
and configuration issues and code quality. What do those all mean? Well, open source security is your third party dependencies for your application. Are there any vulnerabilities in your dependencies that you're relying on that could bite you when you're in running your application in production? Are there any code security issues, meaning the code you wrote for your application? Are there vulnerabilities that you're introducing there? If you're using infrastructure as code, that's where this configuration issues option or view rather comes into play to indicate problems that you might have in that case. And then added nice to have, there's a code quality view that will show you some best practices that you're maybe not following that you can improve upon uh, within your application. So in this case, I have one vulnerability in my package JSON. The express version I'm using right now has an open redirect vulnerability in it at the medium severity level. I can read more about it by clicking on that one, as you saw here, which opens up this new tab. And it tells me that I need to upgrade to version 4.19.2 to have the fix for this one. And that's it. And then I can take proper action, test this application with that new version and sneak just saved me from introducing a vulnerability that I would not have known about because I'm not monitoring all my open source dependencies and what vulnerabilities those have on it. I got a tool like sneak to do that for me and for free. So incorporating these extensions into your development workflow, not only elevates your security game, but it also streamlines your coding process. And remember, security is not just a feature. It's a necessity in today's digital world. If you like more details on these extensions and to further enhance your security knowledge, head over to the blog post that we have on this at sneak.io. Link will be in the description below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with a colleague who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.